All right, I think we can all agree that $20 in America can get us a meal at Starbucks. And if you're lucky, like a movie date with your boyfriend or girlfriend, or if you're single, um, a movie and a popcorn. Fortunately, I had the opportunity to travel this winter and this is what $20 can get you in Bali. It might shock you. The best things in life are free, but you can give them to the birds and bees and me. So there was a lot of people who didn't believe me that I spent $20 a day on my last video. No way. There's no way. You're right. No way. No way. No way. What? Um, no way. That's not impossible. No way. Yes, there is a way. And I know I have an AirPod in my ear because I'm trying to flex on you guys. Why did I say that? Let me tell you something. I used to be someone who I would buy clothes and shoes and things because, but as I grew older, I'm 17 years old right now, I have a social media business to run and I really hesitate to buy certain things because I could either invest it in the business or spend it on myself. I used to hate spending money until I learned about smart money. Now what's the definition of smart money? Smart money is basically money you spend that has direct return. Basically just imagine going to Starbucks and spending money on a latte but when you walk out of Starbucks you make more money than you had in the beginning. Today we're going to teach you the difference of what $20 can get you in America versus Bali plus how to spend more smart money because the deepest question is how do you make money, spend it, and also don't lose it and become broke as fuck? That's what we're going to do today and we're going to dive right in. All right, so the first thing that can get you $20, one of my favorite things is kind of embarrassing. Basically, I enjoy taxi rides. What? Okay, that might be super weird, but hear me out. So basically, in Bali, there's something called Gojek. In my last video, I was talking all about transportation and how to spend money and afford travel. So check the link below if you want to see all about how to finance a trip. But in this video, I'm talking more about like the specific things that you can do. So I love just ordering a taxi with my friends and pulling up my Bluetooth Spotify playlist and playing jams in the car and just like ignoring this taxi driver. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I really find it super enjoyable just to like sit in traffic and listen to music while just like karaoke uh, playing in the background and just having the conversations with our driver. The but it definitely keeps you entertained for a long time. And especially when you have traffic, it's just the best. So I recommend having a good time in the car. <laughs> Another thing you can do that's more exercise driven is going hiking. So there's a place in Bali you need to go to called Nusa Panita. Oh, it's the most beautiful place on earth. And basically it takes a boat ride to get there. So maybe once you spend $5 in the car driving to the boat, then on the boat, you guys can go to Nusa Panita. It costs 350,000 rupiah, which is around $20 a person for an entire one hour boat ride. And this boat ride is so fun. So basically my friends, Rafi, Wen, Haley, and Ryan were all on this boat and we were just like saying, Opa, it's like, oh. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Opa, the boat went up in the waves. It sounds stupid, but trust me, when we were there, it was like really fun. I was like dying of laughter and like everyone on the boat just started to join us and make noises on the boat. I don't know if this is just me, but I really enjoy making noises on moving vehicles, I guess. And once you're on the island, you can go again in the same car ride and drive around Nusa Panita and then hike around. And it's so, so fun. We made friends with our tour guide. You get to see the culture. And I just really enjoy going outside and sitting in cars and boats. So as you can see in Bali, $20 can get you a full day boat ride to an island where you can drive around with a tour guide and jam out to dope ass music. That's where you can get $20 in Bali. In America, you could probably just get a little fitness class. All right, number two, the food in Bali for $20 can get you so much. I'm actually gonna list you guys three options you can choose from in Bali. First is the street food, just things that you can find in little small local shops. There's a place called After Brunch in Bali and basically everything on the menu is under $5. So. One smoothie bowl is $3 and a cup of fruit is another $2. So imagine just a super, super low cost breakfast. Now for lunch, there's a place called Coffee Cartel that I absolutely love if you are in Kangu area or is it called Changu, Kangu? Oh my God. There's a place called Coffee Cartel that has this really good beef rundi and I'm kind of like, vegetarian now, but let's just say when I was eating meat there, um, it was so good. For an entire bowl of like juicy beef and just, it, it was good. 
Now, the third thing you can get are snacks. If you go to any small little grocery shop, there's a bunch of really good snacks, like these granola bars called Soy Joys and some like chips and crackers. Okay guys, so we're at the market before we leave for the boat. I just want to tell you guys, 100,000 rupiah translates to around $7 in US. So that means I'm going to show you guys how you can buy $7 worth of food in a supermarket. These are 8,000. So these are only 10,000 rupees, and these are like the best granola bars I've found in Asia. Like they're so good. So for $20, you can get two meals, breakfast and lunch, and a bunch of snacks and things you can just eat throughout the day. So it is so, so affordable. So number three, the $20 in America that can get you two movie tickets in Bali can get you a two person floating brunch in an infinity pool with a view to a rice field. So write this down. There's a resort called the Kemandalu Resort in Ubud, I believe and by far the most magical experience. Let me just walk you through, okay? You walk in to the resort and they give you a flower and a free lemongrass drink. And then they charge you $20 for a two person brunch. And this brunch comes with a free cocktail or drink, a f like two croissants, an entire platter of small spring rolls and entrees. And you get to lay down on a pool that views to a rice field that has really dope ass house music. $20! And middle school luxury was like movie tickets and like popcorn because popcorn's really expensive, right? So you never get it only on certain occasions. So it blows my mind that in Bali you can get this much value. Seriously can't go over Kim and Dollar Resort and I highly recommend you guys check it out. So I know most of us are now entrepreneurial or we're maybe starting a brand online where you post pictures on social media and you wanna make money out of it. What's scary is you need to spend money as a business owner in order to make money, right? You have to invest in yourself. But the key thing is not spending stupid shit because I think we're all drawn to the nice cars or the Gucci's and just things that are materialistic. But I'm telling you, if you're an entrepreneur, you need to be able to spend the right money. So basically I have a story time and this is something where it's kind of hard for me to open up because it is about money and I'm trying my best. So if I like stutter over my words, just bear with me. So basically this summer I went to Europe for my Europe tour when I meet some of you guys, which are amazing. Um, but I actually had a lot of money to spend and I didn't know if I could afford everything um, This was around like August for one month of traveling in Europe, which is much more expensive than Asia I spent four thousand five hundred dollars just by myself. So four thousand five hundred dollars is a lot of money to me um, It's like a lot of for just like one person. Okay, that's just crazy and I burnt a lot of money and I remember calling my dad because you guys know I'm really close to my dad He gives me a lot of business advice when I'm going through things and I called my dad I'm like holy shit like am I being young and stupid when spending this money because I felt like what I did in Europe was not smart And I couldn't see that you know, I couldn't see a future of me making it back essentially I thought I just did something for fun. I was being so selfish and why did I not invest in the business? Why did I not make more content like things like that and I don't know about you But if you ever buy something stupid you immediately feel like, like regret or anxiety of like should I like return it and the, the problem was you can't return a trip you just spent I felt screwed but my dad gave me this advice how to spend smart money is simple it's three things one ask yourself if I spend this money what is the return that advice blew my mind because you have to think about it in the value say you spend five grand on a trip right but your the value is you're gonna make 10 grand more because you're feeling inspired and you feel happy so that's something to take account like if i travel if i spend this much money on like i don't even know like an apartment can i make it back is there a way for me to see that value make sure you think about it and it takes time the second thing he said which is super interesting because i did not think about this before what happens if you don't spend this money that also blew my mind because you have to also think about it as cost or opportunity if you just hold back and you save this money, are you losing an opportunity in the future? Are you not gonna be able to get that client, create that picture, go to tech content, meet that person that can maybe get to you to the next level? So I thought that was super dope because in my scenario, like if I didn't go on a Europe trip, I wouldn't be able to meet you guys. And that right there is a lot of opportunity lost because you guys are everything to me. The Dharma Nation, which is the squad on this channel, is the reason why I'm growing as a person and you guys changed my life. So I had to, had to go or else, you know, the lost opportunities, like I wouldn't be able to be your word out you so i would say yes if i didn't spend that five grand i would have lost a lot now the last thing my dad said in regards to like spending the five grand and feeling guilty my dad actually let's get my dad on this i'm in the middle of my work just, just to say so i have a question for you so okay. remember when i spent a lot of money in europe and i spent mm -hmm. like five grand Ugh. and you remember i called you i was like this is a lot of money and i don't see the roi in it and you took you gave me really good advice and say like you know th does this money value in it because sometimes you spend money but you know there's roi right. uh, anything improvement in terms of your life always related to output the input and output is the same um it's connected you know let's say you know 
your order rate, let's say like $200. Let's say that if you're happy, you have less one week of sick day. I'm yeah. just making things up. You just divide it, multiply it by how many hours it is, you can quantify it. And that's just happiness. I'm not talking about business side, ability to have confidence. Confidence, for example, allow yeah, you to do more selling. Because I remember you told me when I was in, uh, I reflected. And also networking. That's right? true. Because after I came back from Europe, I met a lot of you guys. I felt more confident. I couldn't see the direct like money ROI because five grand went down the drain. Felt like these other ROIs that I couldn't even put a price tag to it. So in that case, in business, we call it ROI positive. <laughs> As an entrepreneur, you have to think about it. You, you have, have to have farmer mentality instead of hunter mentality. Oh yeah. Every day, it's any, any day you, that you invest in yourself, it's always paid off. You know, people that didn't invest in the time and they want to have short-term return right away, mm -hmm. usually the one that gets short change. Right, right. So, a lot of you know empire is building by investing one brick at a time so the way i look at it is like especially if you go traveling experience those things always paid off ROI positive okay R -O -I positive. <laughs> all right guys so that was today's video thank you dad for being my video if you haven't seen last week's video about how i afford to travel the world and more about the overall strategy to planning a trip abroad go check the link below now before you guys leave um let me know if you enjoyed this video by again liking and leaving a comment. So shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be in the next video, all you gotta do is just hit a comment. I love to hear your thoughts. You guys know that I sit on your comment section all the time. I want to talk to you. Let me know if you guys like this video and I'll make more about financial stuff if you like it. Alright guys, I will catch you guys in the next one. And one more thing before you go, if you could actually um, check out my podcast, I have, a, again, a link below in the description box, but I have a new episode up. It'll be super awesome to see you guys from the YouTube community onto the podcast community because it's a little smaller and I need your help. So let's get it up to, uh, let's say, 500 reviews. We're currently at 100 iTunes reviews. If we can get it up to 500 reviews, I would I would actually puke. I said a number as a joke. Hey guys, I love you guys so much. I'll catch you guys in the next one and goodbye.